New at five, a suspect is dead after police say he tried breaking into an Amarillo home. APD says it happened around 5.30 this morning on North Adams near Northwest 17th Avenue. Officers say the suspect, 53-year-old Cedric Milligan, tried breaking into a home. However, the resident inside was armed and shot him. The homicide unit is investigating tonight. Another in the series I like to call, because you won't hear it in the mainstream media, to the criminals, it's Texas. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms LLC. PAN Firearms, your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there'll be a link in the description box below. And if you like my channel, like my content, and what I do here, you can support me with the link in the description box. Everything is appreciated. But let's talk about this. And when I saw this story, and as, as anytime I see a story like this, especially coming from specific states, I always question the intelligence of criminals. It's Texas. There is, what, a 70, 80% chance that the person you are engaging in criminal activity against is going to have a gun. And you should think that way. Now, if criminals are stupid, why should I encourage them to think? Gives us the advantage in that regard. But it just blows my mind every time I see these stories. <laughs> it's Texas. And it's almost like, oh my God, this person has a gun. It's Texas. Now, New York, yeah. Certain other states, yeah. Maybe you get away with that. But Amarillo, Texas, man breaks into the back door of a woman's home and she shoots and kills him. <laughs> I wish I could say the end, but let's go into here and read this. Right. Truth about guns. Early morning, Amarillo, Texas, home invader shot down by armed female victim. Damn. Cedric Milligan, 53, didn't finish near the top of his high school class. In fact, he might not have finished high school at all given his lack of common sense in breaking into a woman's home in Amarillo, Texas. Only the lowest of the low information types don't know of the Lone Star State's reputation for the widespread embrace of gun ownership. They love their guns in Texas, just like they love baseball, apple pie, and all things American, at least outside of Austin. <laughs> So, unless someone is clinically stupid or has a death wish, most folks know it's a very bad idea to violently force entry into occupied dwellings in most of the state. We might never know what Cedric Milligan had in mind when he smashed in the rear door to a woman's residence in Amarillo last week. She heard the break-in, grabbed the gun, and shot Mr. Milligan dead. Right there. No, she didn't need a mulligan to take care of Milligan, okay? And this is the police report. Okay, but I can come down here. If you listen to gun control industry types like the folks at the Violence and Policy Center, these things never actually happen. In fact, the second highest Google search for women defending their home returns this study from the Violence Policy Center. Spoiler alert, VPC claims only 12 women used a handgun to kill an attacker in all of 1998. This thing goes back to 1998. And this is there coming from their web page. A deadly myth, women, handguns, and self-defense. In the late 1980s, the gun industry began targeting women to counter slumping handgun sales among its primary market of white males. The false message delivered by gun makers was clear. The greatest threat posed to a woman was an attack by a stranger, and the best form of protection a woman could rely upon was a handgun. Well, it technically is. Let's cut all the bullshit out with these people running around saying men are just as equally strong as women and vice versa. No, bullshit. The average man is stronger than the average woman. Stop. When the average man attacks the average woman, she's at a disadvantage. A handgun equals it. And stop. But much to the disappointment and the consternation of the gun industry, these efforts for the most part failed. A 1995 study by the National Opinion Research Center conducted by Tom Smith and Robert J. Smith found that handgun ownership among women was and remains uncommon. 1998. This study found any fluctuations in the percentage of women who hand handguns to be statistically insignificant. Conclusion. Currently, only a small minority of adult American women own a handgun. Before a woman purchases a handgun for protection, she must pause to consider whether the grave risk 
1998, a woman was 101 times more likely to be murdered with a handgun than to use a handgun to justifiably kill an attacker. Is one she is willing to accept? I don't know. Uh, the alternative, you, you have, an op you have a, a choice here. Consider the outcome of having a gun or consider the outcome of a crime not having a gun. And I'd rather have the gun. The only thing missing from the VBC's report is once upon a time at the beginning and happily ever after at the end. Much has changed in America since 1998. Most large urban centers are governed by progressive politicians who experimented with rethinking criminal justice. And you saw, you cannot be blind to what's going on with this as Chicago, St. Louis, and you just rattle off city after city that's run by these woke progressives and the disaster that they are when it comes to crime. But that's being reinforced by progressive prosecutors who refuse to enforce large sections of the criminal code. The outcomes have been entirely predictable. One result is skyrocketing crime rates. Another is women learning that relying on elected officials to effectively run the criminal justice system and on police to help when they call is increasingly iffy. That's why a recent Gallup survey found that unlike 1998, when only a small minority of women were gun owners, the share of women, women who own guns today has risen to 22%. And as for the Amarillo woman who defended her home, we're glad she survived the nightmares attack and wish her the best in her recovery. My first thought as an Illinois resident is that I hope she has a friend or relative who can loan her a replacement gun. But then I realized she lives in Texas. She probably has more of her own. <laughs> oh, that's great. Let's come out of that. Now, as far as women owning guns black women are leading that charge period they see the problem they they are ground zero seeing exactly what's going on in their own neighborhoods and they know better they are not buying into this nonsense oh you're more likely to be killed by a handgun yeah a guy a scumbag with a handgun who's looking to do harm to me that's the person who, that i have a, you know, more likely a chance to be killed by well, guess what? If I equal that by training myself, remember, you hear me all say, I say it all the time, train, train, train. I can equal that out. And I, you know, whether you like guns or not, crime is real. Violence is real. And this whole notion that a civil society doesn't need something is ridiculous. Societies are civil because the population has a means to defend itself not only against the criminal activity but against those in leadership that is the gist of the second amendment but let me know what you think as always you can leave your comments in the comment section below and as always any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed please like share comment subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live i will see you on the next one peace